Okay, so <clears throat> I was I, I could just came home from a very long night. It's it's two in the morning. Um, still timing myself because I have that fifteen minute limit still on my account for no reason. So I have fifteen minutes to vent and ramble. This is uh, going to be one of the more therapeutic ones for me because. I've seen a lot tonight. Um, so we had some some new people come to the general assembly, which tonight was the planning meeting. Um, so we we saw some new people, uh, Terry and Valerie. They were um, taken in by some of the protesters and brought to the GA. And what happened to them was horrible. Um, they were on they were in section 8 housing which is uh subsidized and uh they let someone stay with them for a while and uh it was found out i don't i don't want to go into too much detail about it because it was a horrible situation but it was found out that they let someone stay at their place which amounted to two nights three days two nights and they lost their Section 8 housing, and they were evicted with a 72-hour notice. And uh, they weren't even able to get their stuff when the police came, and they were out on the streets. And um, they had just gotten their place on November 21st, the day after the Occupy protesters lost their place um, in Acacia Park. And they were actually there uh, for... Uh, that moment um, and they had been uh, interested in the movement movement previously um, <clears throat> so uh, Valerie uh, and Terry I took them to Rita's place Occupy Safe Haven South we've got a few places where people have opened up their homes and let people in and Rita's is more uh, geared towards uh, laid-back people with old souls, we'll say. And um, we might be able to get them bounced back on their feet by, uh, let's say, January 3rd-ish. Basically, they had already paid up their rent on this place and they got evicted from it but they're not going to get you know a refund or anything so the place that that they paid to live they can't live and uh since they're both on uh ssi um they're going to have to wait till they get their next payment to find another place to live uh when i saw them they they looked in, in a bad way and then i heard even more about it um they went to a shelter and valerie's medical conditions are such that you know, she's had a stroke and she's uh had seizures and she has seizure med medication and uh her husband has to be by her side 24 7 um in case she has an episode and when they went to a shelter, the shelter tried to separate them. And so Terry said, no, my wife has a medical condition and I have to be next to her 24-7. Uh, when the shelter found this out, they did some looking into their own ability to take care of her and they decided that their insurance wouldn't cover it in case something went wrong with her. So... Uh, they kicked them out in the cold at 10.30 at night, and this was three nights ago, and they walked around for three days downtown um, in the freezing cold, uh, not finding good places to sleep, sleeping under a bridge one night, and then finally uh, ran into Thomas, one of the protesters for Occupy Colorado Springs, 
And so they'd, they'd been walking for three days trying to keep warm. And um, Valerie, I, when I heard that she had uh, recently had a stroke and, and had seizures, when I saw her not really uh, walking correctly, I thought that was part of her condition having had a stroke recently but actually it was just that they had been walking around for three days you know and I understand that I've got more weight than her to carry around and if I had been walking around for three days my feet would be sore too you know but uh um when they were trying to get out what happened to them to the general assembly they were uh crying to their own story and and amber especially i saw her like uh get her heart shredded by that story and, and i've heard too many too many stories lately that you know it, it, is there a such thing as i've heard a whole bunch of bad stories post-traumatic stress syndrome <laughs> Like, seriously. Um, uh, wow. Also on my mind in YouTube land is the fact that uh, Eagle Eye 1975 was not able to spend Christmas with his children uh, because of the situation he's in. And... Um, just another story and so I took uh, Terry and Valerie to Rita's and stayed there for a little while to make sure that you know personalities were gelling and and things were cool and then I went to Jack's place at Occupy Safe, Safe Haven North which is uh, under an eviction notice uh, evicted for Christmas was the video I did for them and uh, there are a lot of people there that uh, you know they they don't know where they're going to be in 24 hours you know it it's a possibility that you know in the next few hours because that's when the police like to do shit like that they like to evict people in the middle of the night um, that happened to Terry and Valerie, and that happened to the Occupy uh, protests. They like to do it in the middle of the night, so you can't call your friends to help back you up. And I guess the police get more overtime. Um, yeah. Uh, we, we've been working on plan Bs as far as uh, what to do with all of the protesters that were in Jack's apartment. And there's uh, a couple of plans to do what the other occupation protests have been doing in protecting people's uh, homes from foreclosure by occupying their homes. And we have some lined up, but... Uh, the ones that we do have lined up wouldn't uh, really give anyone any place to stay in the next 48 hours. You know, we don't have anything lined up for that. It's like, it's very hard to manage a whole bunch of protesters with no place to live or go at all. And try as I might, um, even the ideas that I've I've thrown out there are kind of really out there. Uh, and the the hours that I just spent at Jack's uh, were kind of sad. Um, I offered, because I know I could, uh, put some of his paintings in my bedroom. Uh, 
I offered that much, but he had already had a whole bunch of people offer to protect his art. And uh, tomorrow morning I'm going to take him to a gallery uh, that he already has some of his paintings in, and we're going to ask the gallery owner to uh, store his paintings, either ha you know put them up for sale or uh, or display, or you know if there's any sort of back room. And most everything else in that place is, uh, it was donated free or, you know, isn't that consequential. It's mostly the people. And, you know, he had offers to protect his paintings, but no offers at all to shelter the people. And so... I got a few more minutes left to ramble. <sighs> Couldn't really talk in Skype without getting this out, guys. Um, <laughs> just needed to get it out there. Uh, we talked about some of the uh, arrangements that they could make to have more communal living, but um, there aren't really a lot of renters that have places large enough to house all of the protesters that we have that would rent to uh, a bunch of protesters or a bunch of people who aren't related in the same family even though they'd like to live communally um, it's just not the case that they can find anyone that will rent to that sort of purpose so Hopefully tomorrow uh, we'll find some good news, but there was, there was a lot of bad tonight. And to see people not really knowing if the police are going to barge in on them the next minute is, you know, it's horrible especially knowing that the the best that we can offer them is other places where people might you know police might barge in on them again and uh they they'd have to live under the stress continually of uh well the police could come in on this foreclosure well we've got another foreclosure lined up that you can camp out there and well police might f come in on that one you know we really haven't come up with any solutions that would uh, that would that would establish a stable place for them to all live. So, working on it, and that's the end of my ramble time. So, hopefully, that was enough therapy for me. Was it good for you too? Uh, while players find somebody else to listen to.